In lesson 69, we're going to be introduced to a concept called integration by parts. Um, obviously, you see a one after the error, so we'll be um, learning more about it and, and do more variations of it later in calculus. Um, integration by parts is going to be a, a concept we use when we can't use u substitution or we can't easily figure out what the integral is. Uh, we normally th see things as a product, and we use integration by parts. Um, although sometimes it's not real obvious uh, that it's a product or that you need integration by parts. So um, if you can't do it using u substitution, you might want to try this method of integration by parts. The method comes from the idea of the product rule for um, differentials. And see, we see here that uh, integral or the differential of uv, we use the product rule, is the first times the differential of the second plus the second times the differential of the first. And what we're going to do, we want to um, be dealing with integration, so we're going to integrate both sides and realize when you integrate both sides, if you integrate this whole side, uh, the integral of the entire side is the same as the integral of each individual part because of the sum that we have here. And so we have uh, the integral of each side, the left side, they're inverses, so you just have u times v. The right side, we have these two integrals added together. And what we're going to do here is we're going to solve for u dv by subtracting this from both sides. Um, so there we have that. And then we're just going to use the symmetric property and turn that whole uh, equation around. And we have the integral of u times dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. This is a, uh, an important equation to know. Um, we're going to be using this for integration by parts. And so what this says here, this is equation is the basis for integration by parts. It's important to make the right choice for your substitution of u and v, your u and dv. And uh, if you don't make the right substitution, you can make it more difficult. And that's, I've definitely done that before. And then you just go and if that happens, you go back and resubstitute. So how do you assign the different functions for substitution? Well, look over here. We have a u and a dv, and we're going to assign u. So the derivative of u becomes simpler. And when you take the integral of dv, it doesn't become more complicated. So it doesn't have to become simpler, but you just don't want it to become more complicated. And that's how we make those substitutions, and things should work out pretty well. Um, over here on the right side when actually finding the integral. So this is saying to find the integral of u times dv, or two functions multiplied, you can use this formula right here. And this integration here should be simpler than this integration here. We could always also write this in uh, function notation. It's the same idea, still using the product rule. First times the derivative of the second, plus second times the derivative of the first. Um, and you can move through and take the integral of both sides, solve for this one, and down here you have your integration by parts formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. So here we have x times the sine of x dx. We want to integrate that. And we might think, well, sine is the main function, but it's actually multiplied times x, which we can't... Um, integrate that using u substitution. So we're going to try this idea of integration by parts. I'm going to go ahead and choose my u and dv. Remember, u, we want to get simpler. And dv, when we take the integral, shouldn't become more complicated. So over here, if we take the derivative of x, if we choose u to equal x, when we differentiate, that shouldn't become more complicated. Um, or actually, it should become simpler even better. So what we're going to do here is we differentiate, and that helps us find du. So the differential of that will give us uh, du equals dx. And then if we chose u to equal x, actually I shouldn't do this yet. If I chose u to equal x, the leftover sine x dx is what has to be for dv. And we remember um, when we integrate, this shouldn't become more complicated. So we're going to integrate up here to um, get our value of v. 
And so, again, I mentioned this before, differentiate here becomes simpler for sure, du equals dx, and integrating up here is going to be negative cosine x, so v is going to equal negative cosine x, which doesn't become more complicated. And so now we're just going to make our substitutions here. We thought through this, we have u dv, integral of u dv, we made our substitute, our um, yeah, we're figuring out what our different values are for u and v. Here's the formula. This is what we need to know. It's this part right here, uv minus the integral of v du. And let's go ahead and make our substitutions. Um, u was equal to x, v is equal to negative cosine x, and then minus the integral of v, negative cosine x, times du, which was equal to dx. And this is pretty straightforward. Just multiply this together, you get negative x cosine x. We have a negative, kind of a negative one in here, so we can bring that constant out, which makes it plus in between there. And the integral of cosine x is simply sine x. And we can just put our plus c at the end, and there is the integral of x sine x dx. Taking a look at our next one, Um, we have the integral of natural log of x dx, which is an important one to know uh, because we, we know the derivative of natural log, but we don't know the integral of natural log. So we'll actually kind of come up with a formula for that right now. This one is not as obvious um, a product, but since we don't know the integral of natural log of x, um, we're going to make it a product. And so we want to choose our substitutions. We want u, and we remember we want u to be something that is easy to differentiate and becomes a bit simpler. And dv, we don't want to become more complicated. Um, just real quick, we, we cannot just put dx here. Um, well, we don't want a dx there. Our, really, our only choice is natural log of x here. If we try to put it in the integral, I mean in the dv spot to integrate it, we don't know how to integrate natural log of x, so that wouldn't work out. So we're going to go ahead and let u equal to natural log of x, which means uh, the dv is just going to equal dx. And remember to get du, we differentiate. And to get v, we integrate. And so let's do those things. The differential of natural log is 1 over x dx, or just dx over x. And the integral of dv d equals dx is just v is equal to x. So nice um, values. They were easy to do. So now what we do is here's what we, uh, we want to use our formula here, u times v minus the integral of v times du, our integration by parts formula. So we can plug in u, which is natural log of x, and plug in v, which is equal to x. So plug in these things, minus the integral of v, which was equal to x, dx over x, which was du. And so notice here, um, right here, this is pretty easy. This will just be x times the natural log of x is a better way to write that. Over here, the x cancels with the x, and we're really just integrating dx. So when we integrate 1 dx, if you want to just think of it as 1 dx, we're just going to get x. So we're going to have x times the natural log of x minus x plus c. And so here, we actually just found the formula for the integral of natural log of x dx. So we will use this actually later on um, in one of the um, following examples. Coming to this one. We have x times e to the 2x dx. Uh, we want to think of something as u and something as dv. Both of these are easy to take the derivative of. We take the derivative of x, it becomes simpler, um, or the differential of x. The differential of e to the 2x is also simple. It's a chain rule, so you just have a 2 out front. But um, if we but we, we have to pick one of these as our um, u value 
and the one that becomes simpler is the x. So we're going to put uh, choose u to equal x, which means dv has to equal this part that's left over, which is e to the 2x dx. So over um, in our bottom part for our dv, it's going to be equal to e to the 2x dx. And again, what we do, we need to find our value of du. So we differentiate here. Differentiating there um, gives us du equals dx. And over here, we want to find our value of v for up here. So we have to integrate. And to integrate, or when we integrate um, e to the 2x, we get 1 half e to the 2x. Uh, if you think through that, we might have to um, do a little guess and check. So we might guess e to the 2x, but then using the chain rule to check in the derivative, uh, we have this extra 2, so we have to have this 1 half out front. So now we have our all four boxes, and we're going to do our substitution into the formula. So again, there's the formula. And we want to make our substitutions. So um, u is equal to x. v is equal to 1 half e to the 2x minus v, still that 1 half e to the 2x, times du which is just equal to dx. So we made our substitutions there. Um, over here, uh, we can put the x in there. Um, and then for our integral, again, we might have to do some guessing and checking. Um, but I'm going to assume that you can work through that and figure out what that's going to be. And you end up getting a 1 fourth because um, you need a, an extra 1 half because of this again. But um, 1 fourth e to the 2x and something missing there. We need to have a plus c. And you can leave it like that. You could also, um, it's the same answer. You could also factor out some of the terms there. You have an e to the 2x in each of them. You could actually factor out a quarter out of each of them if you wanted to, or a half. Um, but there's our answer. The last one here, it says integrate x times natural log of x dx. Now I don't have anything set up here, so let's just go ahead and work through this um, all together. So normally we like to put this box here. And in our top left, we want our u. and the bottom right, we want dv. And we're not there yet, but we'll differentiate after we make our choice for u. And we'll integrate after we make our choice for dv. Um, so far, we would have kind of thought, and I'm going to go ahead and do this just to see what happens. Um, it looks like x would be a good choice, because if we take the differential of x, actually, let's go ahead and write this. Our formula is, um, if we're integrating u times dv, equals u times v minus the integral of v du. So we want u and v. So let's think through this. This, If I make this choice here, this would be du is equal to dx. If I let u equal to x, then dv would have to equal natural log of x. Um, dx integrating. Well, we did the integral before, but uh, the integral of natural log of x is x natural log of x minus x, which would be v. But remember, this is not, or this is to become not more complicated, and it does become more complicated. So this is not the correct choice here. Um, and that's what happens sometimes you make a choice to, to try and it actually doesn't work out so well. Uh, so you might have to redo some of that stuff or start again. So we don't want to make those choices for um, our, our D, I mean our V and our DU. So we don't want to make this equal to X. 
Well, what's our other choice? Our other choice is make, to make this e equal to natural log. So let's say this is natural log of x, which means dv ends up being the x dx that's left over. Now let's try this. If we uh, this is natural log, so we, if we differentiate this, this ends up being du equals 1 over x dx, or just dx over x. If we integrate here the integral of x, so v is going to equal 1 half x squared, which we might may or may not think that becomes more complicated. It's still one term. This is a linear term. This is a squared term, but let's try it out. The other one didn't work well, so let's try this. And so now what we want to do is we want to use our formula here. We can just bring it right down here and, and work this out. U was equal to natural log of x times v, which was 1 half x squared, minus v, 1 half x squared, times du, which was this part here, so 1 over x dx. Um, over here in our, this um, is fine, we can write it, let's just use the commutative property here and switch it around a little bit. 1 half x squared times the natural log of x, minus, we can actually simplify in here, the, the 1 half can come out front because it's a constant. Uh, one of these x's cancels with this, so we're actually just integrating x dx, and we still have our 1 half x squared times the natural log of x, minus, and we have 1 half for integrating x, which becomes 1 half x squared, and we, we're integrating, so we have plus some constant out here, and actually set up like this, um, we could multiply the half and half and get a fourth, but if you notice, we have a 1 half x squared and a 1 half x squared in each term. Uh, not always necessary, but we can factor out the 1 half x squared, and we're left with natural log of x minus half plus c. So sometimes uh, you can leave it in different terms and you multiply this to become 1 fourth, or you can factor factor something out of there. And that is integration by parts, um, just an introduction to it and using it for a few different examples.